This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the place to go for all of your website needs. Every now and then a lens comes along that is so good in the real world, obvious from the very first frame you shoot with it, that it is actually reason enough to buy into an entire camera system. Viltrox's 550 buck 75 f1.2 Pro Series and Fujifilm XF mount is just such a lens. Well built, keenly priced, super compact for what it is, highly performant, an autofocusing APS-C coverage lens offering the equivalent field of view and shallowest depth of field wide open of a full frame 115 f1.8 lens, which, by the way, is a configuration I like for portraiture even more than an 85 or 90. Superb for subject background separation, beyond just portraiture, on the street, holy smokes. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and one. Other than telling you that I've been watching Viltrox closely ever since we tested their 85 1.8 against Sony's 85 1.8 and our own Zeiss Batis 85 1.8 TLDR, it fared surprisingly well. Two, that Viltrox sent me this lens with no expectation that I return it. And you know what? I'm, I'm not going to. Three, that no money exchanged hands. Four, that they had no input to this video, nor advanced preview of it. And five, that the views expressed herein, as always, are absolutely my own. I really don't have much to add, other than to say that my delight with the images, the ease with which I captured them, including autofocus, much quieter and surer than Fujifilm's 56 1.2 Mark II, my surprise at the excellent build quality and weather resistance, which is next level compared to their earlier 85 1.8, and the latitude it gave me to punch in across the entire frame when attached to the 40 megapixel X-H2, would have been the same thing with the X-T5, combined to make me realize that I'd be happy especially to make the X-H2 with this lens along with, say, one of their next-gen 1.4s. I'm thinking the 23, but maybe the 33. My primary system for my personal street work. If I were unable to afford the gear I do have. Put differently, yeah, this one lens has convinced me that the X-H2 really is a Leica SL2 Mini-Me for less than one-third the price, far less than that when considering the price of glass. Which is a big deal because, candidly, the market has moved so far and so rapidly since I first went hands-on with the X-T2 back in 2017 that my expectations and the gear I now use as a result... are so high and superb, respectively, that I've been feeling an unusual, well, unusual for me, ambivalence toward Fujifilm's latest high-resolution X-H2 and X-T5 cameras. There, I said it out loud. Frankly, I'd been grappling with this for months, a function of what I now consider the too-long-in-the-tooth menu system and touch interface, the higher noise, more limited dynamic range, and lower resolution of the 40-megapixel APS-C sensor compared to the latest sensors in my full-frame cameras, and most importantly, really, the still-not-quite-there autofocus and still-not-quite-there refresh of their lens line. Think, for example, of the autofocus performance of their Mark II 5612 or the noticeable dip in resolution of their new 30 2.8 macro halfway between center and edge, even without pixel peeping. But 
From the moment Claudia and I arrived at the uber-cool time machine known as the TWA Hotel at JFK International Airport, and I raised the XH2 with Viltrox attached to fire off that first shot to my eye, all of that melted away. What about the lack of lens IS? It's a legitimate question, but in the real world, shooting the Viltrox handheld at 1 15th of a second, closing in on three stops below the reciprocal rule, was a breeze on the IBIS-equipped XH2. Of course, I have reacquainted myself with bracing breath control and shutter delay ever since getting my Leica M11. Oh, poor me. What about close to minimum focusing distance testing in the Bat Studio? Interestingly enough, excellent. But not the best I've ever seen. That shouldn't really surprise anyone, and it doesn't matter. The bottom line is this. For what I do and how I do it, this lens, at this price, this size, this build quality is just superb, thoroughly gratifying, somewhere between 95 and 99% of the time. Would I feel the same way were I to see this kind of optical performance with a four times the price Sony 135 F1.8 G Master or 10 times the price, like a 90 millimeter F2 Aposumicron SL in the Bat Studio? No, I wouldn't. So what? I will wrap it up this way. One, the weight, cost, performance, resolution, and sheer enjoyment of the Fujifilm APS-C X series system compared to full-frame systems, never mind larger than full-frame systems, just became more compelling with this one lens. And of course, the new 40 megapixel sensor and new processor that goes with it. I mean, try to find a lens as good as this at this price, this small, for example, in Canon's RF lens ecosystem. You can't. For image quality as good, you'd have to pony up for either their full-frame $2,600 RF 85 1.2 or their just-announced $2,100 full-frame image-stabilized RF 135 1.8. Two, if you are already invested in the Fujifilm APS-C ecosystem, picking up this lens should be very high on your priorities list. Even if you already have the 56 1.2, it is that good. Three, if you are thinking about entering the Fujifilm APS-C ecosystem, I tell you that this lens should be at or near the top of your list as the second lens you buy, irrespective of whatever you buy first, unless, of course, you're a portrait photographer. In that case, I tell you to get the Viltrox first, even over the thousand buck Mark II version of their wonderful 56 1.2. Four. If you are not thinking about entering the Fujifilm APS-C ecosystem and are leaning toward Canon's latest R50 or R8, my advice is to slow down and take a long, hard look at what you get per dollar, pound, euro, yen, whatever from Canon, and what you get from Fujifilm and its XF ecosystem. Especially considering what you get and you actually need from a camera instead of a laundry list of specs utterly irrelevant to 99% of us 99% of the time, like... 40 frames per second shooting. Come on. Especially considering what you actually get or don't get that you will use on almost every shot, stills, or video, like, Bo, I don't know, Ibis. High-performance lenses at reasonable prices. A half-inch 5.7 million dot EVF versus, say, and I'm just spitballing here, a 2.3 million dot 0.39 inch EVF. You know, stuff like that. Then again, with all of this said, for the things I mentioned earlier, from a menu system and touch interface sorely in need of an overhaul, to Fujifilm's Xeno Paradox video AF performance, or the distance Fujifilm needs to travel before their XF lens line is truly worthy across the board of their 40 megapixel sensor, remain. Five, as does the nod to full frame for momentum and innovation, it is indisputable. Still, finally, six, 
these things notwithstanding, none of them have ever prevented me from getting the images I wanted from a Fujifilm camera. And the very latest cameras from Fujifilm are their best X-mount cameras ever. The Viltrox reminded me of that fact, to which I can only close by saying, Bravo, Viltrox, and thank you, Fujifilm, for your enlightened approach to third-party lenses. Now, Fujifilm, could you just get cracking and give us an X100-6, an X-Pro4, and an X-C5, all with one or the other of these two new sensors, all with larger high-resolution EVFs to go with them? That would be fantastic. And Viltrox, while you're at it, could you create a full-frame version of this 75 1.2? Because that would be great, and I'd buy it for my Leica SL2. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From custom domains to beautiful websites using their easily customizable templates that you can have up and running in minutes, e-commerce, email and email marketing, SEO, analytics, and scheduling, Squarespace does it all and has done it for us for the last six years. If you are a small to mid-sized business in any industry, Squarespace is the place to go for all of your website needs. Hop over to www.squarespace.com slash you for a free trial. And if you like what you see and want to move forward, receive 10% off your first order by using the discount code Hugh at checkout. Thanks, Squarespace. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join the conversation in the comment section below because this is an exceptional audience. If you'd like help with a portfolio review, gear selection, finding or honing your artistic voice, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring video call via Zoom at 3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, please consider supporting our work by using the no cost to you affiliate links down below, sending us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially joining us on Patreon links down below as well. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you for it.